Hi there, welcome back, maybe. Um, I started my advent of code 2020 yesterday, and uh, I wrote it using JavaScript, and then I did another video doing JQ. Um, and my plan was to attempt to uh, also solve it using Z80 assembly, which I am not very familiar with at all, and requires a completely different mindset of thinking. Um, and I end up getting to sleep at about midnight last night, um, just trying to solve how to um, loop or do a double nested loop in assembly. And uh, it just takes a very, very different uh, mindset and one that I was not really ready for. So anyway, day two in JavaScript, the purpose of this video is to like teach you some JavaScript and share my working thought process. Um, so this is uh, day two. Um, it boils down to um, the, uh, what are the, the, you're trying to rent a toboggan or something? No, I don't know what you're trying to do. Basically they've got a password policy, uh, which is described in uh, this line of text. Um, and the policy is basically just this part. So. Uh, the letter A needs to appear between one and three times, um, and this is a, a valid password. The letter B should appear one to three times. This is invalid because it doesn't have the letter B. And the letter C should appear between two and nine times, uh, and this is valid. So we need to find the invalid password from the puzzle input, which looks like this. Um, so I've already saved this uh, file. Um, where are we? Here we go. So we already saved this file, uh, and I've got an empty file for 2B. I don't know what 2B is yet. Um, I'm going to grab the code from uh, 1A that reads in the lines. Um, so I'm using uh, Node, and I'm also going to use a tool called Quokka to help me um, work as I go. So um, I'm not going to describe what Quokka is every time I start one of these videos, so uh, you can have a look at yourself. So I'm going to read the file in. Um, I'm going to split on new lines, uh, empty out. This basically gets rid of any empty lines um, because trim will return a kind of falsy string. So if um, two input from 2020, 2020 rather, uh, has any empty lines, those will be stripped. Um, and we're not going to parsing them, that's fine. Uh, but we probably, let's have a look at the file format. We probably do actually need to break this up. So the, um, there's kind of a regex that's required here, right? We've got uh, three, well, two parts. Basically, it splits on the colon, and the left side is the um, the rule for the password, and the right side is the actual password itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to map my array, and I'm going to uh, map through each one of these lines, breaking it into um, a data structure, and then um, probably use a regex, um, but I can probably, I don't know, maybe get around using a regex. Um, there's a few ways that we can do this, but let's just go straight into the map. Um, so we've got line, a really bad habit of calling this underscore, which is confusing to people. I'm gonna do um, const um, rule and uh, password equals line dot split on colon space, I guess. That should work. And I can also test what's coming out of here by sticking this question mark at the end. Uh, we need to return, let's return the rule. So we should array all the rules. And actually the rule isn't quite that. It needs to be uh, const r n, I guess. Um, hmm. It's pretty easy to do that as a regex. Um, so I do, I'm gonna use a, reg, uh, a regular expression to match on uh, this rule. And actually, here's a really useful tool, regx101. I use this when wanting to kind of sketch out regular expressions. Um, so let's grab this first one. Okay, so we can assume that the text looks like this. Let's put in a couple actually, just to make sure we've got um, a working rule. And what I'm gonna do is use a, a replace state or a match to kind of capture each piece. So um, I'm going to have a number um, that I'm going to capture, uh, but that can be more than one number. And then I'm going to have a, a dash and then another number for more than one. 
and then a space and then I think it's just a letter every time, right? So yeah, just a single letter. So um, dash w, I think it is. I can never remember what dash w is of it. Uh, it's any kind. We basically want not a digit. No, that's not right. I guess a to z. I don't want to capture that. I mean, screw it. That's fine. Close enough. Like if there's a number, maybe the maybe the password has a, a number in it. I don't think any of them do. Just skimming them. It's worth checking though. No, they're all letters. This will be fine though. Um, so that gives us our match. We've got. Um, we want to capture that part as well. Slash w. There we go. That looks to work. So we've got four five l and then fourteen. Yeah, that's cool. So let's pop that into our match so we're going to do uh, const match equals uh nope wrong way around wait how do i do this rule dot match is that way around i can't remember yes no what yeah All right we've got too much coming out on the screen um and the nice thing about this chaining is i can slice a small bit out uh one and then five so we're only dealing with five results here. Yeah, that's good. Right, so we've got, um, we know that we're gonna get a match. So we're gonna basically grab some of this and we're gonna do um, min max letter. Okay, so if we drop that out, um, min max letter, we should find what we're looking for. Yeah, cool. Um, let's actually make this a let so we can convert min and max to a number. So we're going to do min equals parsint min 10 because we're doing decimals and max is a uh, decimal as well. And so now we could build up a regex. So we could say um, uh, const re equals new regular expression. Um, and we can pass in a string. And what we're going to do is say we are looking for, um, we're going to be looking for, let's stick in one of those passwords. Um, that one is a good one. Um, so we're looking for an S, and we want the S to appear, what was it, four or ten times? Four or to ten times. Um, so that doesn't have, oh no, that's in sequence. So, right, we need to actually just count the number of times it appears. Okay, so that, I don't think we can use a regular expression because a regular expression is expecting them to be in sequence. Um, we could just do, um, um, let's do a count. So let's do um, const count equals password dot split and just break it into letters. So the password is going to look like um, you know, just a sequence of letters like that. And then we're going to do filter. Uh, letter is equal to letter. Oops, L equals L um, dot length. So now we should have a number of occurrences. Okay. And um, return. I guess actually this could be a filter, couldn't it? Not even a map filter return count is uh, greater than or equal to min and count is less than or equal to max and let's have a look so what have we got back out um file this is just this is a result isn't it uh, res <clears throat> so we should get the valid password so at the first five it believes that the First one is invalid, so let's check that. Four else is valid, so we've messed this up already. Oh, no, wait, we're not including it. There we go. Okay, so the second one is apparently valid, yep. Should we stick one in that's not valid? Let's make the min, let's make that three. Cool, yeah, okay, so now that first one is missing. That's good, okay. Um, so 
What we're looking for is res.length console.log. And let's get rid of this slice. So we've got uh, 434. So that apparently, how many passwords are valid? Oops, not valid. Yes, valid, 434. Submit. Yay, right answer. Okay, so let's have a look at part two. Okay, so I've just kind of read this and rewrote this and reread it. Um, and I have trouble kind of parsing this kind of stuff. Uh, and this is where I make the mistakes. Um, but to translate what part two is, uh, it's saying that actually the rule isn't hasn't been correctly interpreted. The policy describes um, the position of the letter in the password. So one means the first character, two means second character. So this means that um, the A should appear in either the position one or position three. And importantly, exactly one of these positions must contain the letter, not both. So where we have two and nine, it's saying that C is in both, therefore it's invalid. So how many passwords are valid according to this new interpretation of the policy? So let's copy this and stop Quokka. And let's open 2B in 2020, and just dump that whole lot back in. Uh, start up Quokka again. And uh, so we've got the rule. Let's just look at the first five again. Um, and just to look at the input, we've got uh, position four and five. So four and five is quite literally one, two, three, four, five. And there's that, index zero is, not, oh yeah. So this one should be false because it contains the L at four and five, and it should only contain it at four or five. So instead of, we still want to do a split by character, and I think that's fine. Um, and what we can do is, hmm, I guess we just do can't split equals that, and um, if split dot min is equal to L. No, nope, letter, there you go. Then we need to check it's not in the other one. If split max is not equal to letter, then return true. And then we need to do the same thing the other way around. So if, wait, max, yeah, if the max contains a letter and not the min, then return true, I think. Let's have a look at what's coming back out. Nothing. Okay, let's uh, let's create a password that we know should work. So let's duplicate this. And um, what are we going to do? We're going to do uh, five and six. Okay, that is. Oh, the results up there. Okay. Hmm. That's wrong, isn't it? This one. Ah, uh, but this is. Um, Hmm. This is index zero. Uh, so the, the, the split refers to the first character at zero and our min refers to the first character as one. So we need to subtract one from each of these. So now, yes, we have this one's valid and uh, this one's valid, the one and six. So let's just double check the one and six one. So it expects Z to be in position one, but not in position six. And this is two, three, four, five, six. So this one's sixth. Yep, it's good. Cool. All right, let's save that. Let's um, probably spitting out res. And then we're just going to log res.length. Two. So let's stick two in there. Ah, okay. What do we get wrong? 
Okay. So let's try putting these three in. Oh, where's the sample data? Let's put the sample data in. Let's get rid of that lot. So this thing's one is valid, which is the what we expect. We also expect that first one to be valid. Yeah, okay. So the input is good. It reckons that there's two good ones. What have I done here? This is interesting that the max position is good, but the min position is never good. That seems, oh, hello. <laughs> that was it. I had the slice still in there. That was helping me debug. Uh, so 509, uh, I hate giving a wrong answer the first time, but they don't judge you. So that's it. So what did we, what did we meet here? We met, uh, so we've got this read file is returning text which we then chain because we can. So the, the text is the same as kind of doing, uh, you know, remy.split, which returns an array, right? So we can do then filter and so on. Okay, and even our um, code completion kind of knows what type of objects come back. Um, so I'm doing a lot of chaining here. Um, in this kind of code, I probably would do this as well. Um, and I was originally going to use a map, but uh, I decided to switch it to a filter because I just need a number back. Um, whereas a map would have returned every single instance. Um, and I think this code can probably be written more succinctly, um, but it doesn't really matter uh, because performance at this level is really not an issue, uh, like quite literally a non-issue. It's uh, microseconds you're talking about. Um, and also, also from a kind of legibility point of view, you can see that I'm both I'm I'm checking both the min and the max separately. Um, so this would be false. In fact, in theory, I think we don't need that line. No, we do need that line. What am I talking about? Why is that? Surely that should be true either way. Like this should be true. Oh no, because this isn't. Uh. So I was thinking this should be true because this was false, but actually when this is true, it can fall into, this can be false and then it drops into here. So yeah. Uh. I mean, if that was an else, that would do it. Yeah, there you go. Okay, fine, made a bit more succinct. I think that actually is harder to read. I think I prefer this for when I come back to this in a year's time. So yeah, and uh, regex is um, keep them nice and simple. You know, in the end, I didn't need to do exactly a letter. I could have changed this to be, you know, A to, uh, a to Z, but um, you know, that worked. And Regex 101, superb, superb piece of kit. Thanks for watching.